So I just want to take a quick look at uh, this fractal antenna that I picked up probably three years ago now. Um, I've tried to look on my eBay history, but it's dropped off, so it must be over three years old. Um, I picked this up because uh, originally it was advertised as a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna, and uh, when it arrived, I quickly hooked it up to the network analyzer and then I found out it's not. It's it's not responsive at all in those frequency in that frequency area. So it just stayed on my shelf. But I've noticed recently, um I mean it might not be recently, I've only just noticed myself, but a lot of the sellers are still selling this in huge quantities on eBay and uh, other stores, but they're now classing it as a uh, ultra wide band uh, antenna and um, no longer are they mentioning uh, any kind of uh, Wi-Fi at all. It's just classed as an ultra-band, uh, wide-band antenna. And interestingly enough, they're not including any of the frequencies that this operates at. So, you know, they're being a bit um, scarce on the details, let's say. So I thought uh, we'll take a quick look at it. I'll share my thoughts about uh, fractal antennas and uh, see what uh, hotspots this uh, actually hits at um, as I said I just did a quick scan for 2.4 gigahertz found out it was rubbish and stuck it on my shelf so let's take it over to the test bench and hook it up and take a look at the frequencies I am going to scan from um, around uh, 5 megahertz to 2 gigahertz and then 2 gigahertz to 4 and 4 to 6 so we're going to break it up a little bit just to uh, so we can take a closer look at those frequencies so Let's hook it up see what it looks like. So I've got the antenna set up on the test bench then. Uh, a setup that you've seen me do many, many times. I've got it uh, a little bit away from me as well because it seems to be a little bit sensitive. But let's now take a look at the network analyzer. So here we are on the network analyzer then. And I'm scanning from 200 megahertz over here to 2 gigahertz here. I did have it set to uh, 10 megahertz starting point but there was nothing to see there just a lot of noise so um, starting from 200 megahertz to 2 gigahertz here and these two areas look interesting so let's uh, move the cursor so this small dip here we're getting uh, you know a reasonable return loss there not bad and that's at uh, 1.49 gigahertz and then we'll move it along here in between the uh, return loss is so dire but uh, this really nice one here that's a nice low return loss and it's almost at 2 gigahertz 1.937 gigahertz there so we've got two one respectable uh, one and then a, a second one that's not too bad and yeah, you can include these little dips over here if you want to uh, yeah I mean uh, what is that? 9.96 gigahertz and 600 megahertz there. So, what is interesting is this, uh, call it 1 gigahertz here, is uh, probably the second harmonic coming from this almost 2 gigahertz uh, signal here. So, you can see where they're coming from, and this one here is probably the second harmonic is this one over here so yeah it's I mean it's not bad I mean uh, as I say they, they don't really impress me uh, fractal antennas but uh, let's have a look at what it looks like from uh, 2 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz we may see some more impressive frequency responses from those so here we are then, uh, it's looking a little bit more impressive over here now, um, scanning from 2 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz, and we've got our first really nice dip here, and that is at uh, 2.3 gigahertz, uh, a nice low return loss, and now you can see why it stayed on my shelf for almost three years, because as a, a Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz antenna, pretty damn useless, I mean... Uh, if we put it into that kind of spectrum around here you can see it's not an antenna at all in those frequencies well that's a nice response there so we'll go along keep going and we get this second really nice response down here 
really low return loss and that's at 3.3 gigahertz so that's going into the uh, 5G uh, spectrum <laughs> yes uh, that's a pretty nice uh, return loss there and we'll keep going we've got another one here and again 3.6 gigahertz um, again that's in the second uh, frequency in the 3 gigahertz frequency for the 5G at least here in the UK uh, I think Vodafone uses uh, a frequency around there but uh, yeah and then we get another response right at the top here and that's at 3.97 gigahertz there and again a uh, quite respectable return loss so we're hitting some points there between uh, 2 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz that's not bad at all a lot better than those uh, lower frequencies below 2 gigahertz and here we are then scanning from 4 gigahertz up to uh, 6 gigahertz and I think we've seen uh, you know probably the best output from this antenna already you can see here I've got the cursor on that leading edge of that really nice uh, uh, frequency response that we had right at the top there at uh, almost 4 gigahertz so this is 4 gigahertz here um, you can see the return loss is really really high because that's at that you know far leading edge but uh, if I move the cursor along now yeah we've got some little responses there but the return losses are so high that is extremely poor so yeah going along 5 gigahertz there yep still extremely poor all the way to the end right up to 6 gigahertz again yeah it's poor so I think uh, the best of these uh, frequency responses from this particular antenna come between the uh, 3 gigahertz and uh, the 4 gig uh, sorry the 2 gigahertz and the 4 gigahertz um, especially those responses in the uh, 3 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz spectrum but uh, anywhere else I don't think you could really call these much to write home about between the 4 gigahertz and the 6 gigahertz at all now as we saw uh, quite interesting really um, I wouldn't class it as uh, ultra wideband at all um, as you saw it seemed to be uh, most responsive between uh, 3 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz uh, I would say that's where it operates best at and especially as a uh, transmitting and receiving antenna uh, those uh, points that it hit between those uh, two frequencies of 3 and 4 gigahertz it would work really well at um, yeah we saw frequency responses in other areas <sighs> nothing to write home about I mean uh, you know the Voldy antenna hits more frequencies over a wideband than uh, this certainly does um, there's other antennas that do as well um, yeah certainly you know I can see now why they're not advertising this as a Wi-Fi antenna as you saw not responsive at all in those frequencies but uh, we did hit some nice frequencies in uh, you know the uh, 5G bands there in the 3 gigahertz region but because we weren't getting anything else in any other areas um, I wouldn't use it as a cellular antenna either because if if you get a fallback and you need to drop back to the uh, 4G frequencies, you know, the, the slower speed frequencies, it's not going to do it for you. Um, but it's interesting that uh, it did seem to work in those areas. Maybe you could take this and do a bit of work on it and try and expand and come up with something better based on this. But other than that, I really can't see the point of this particular antenna but it does seem to be popular at the minute and without causing any arguments uh, the the uh, fractal antenna does have um, you know its fan base and this particular design um, I'm probably going to butcher his name but um, I believe it's called a Spiskinski Skipinski uh, triangle and the the triangle let's call it is a very interesting uh, thing on its own uh, from a mathematical point of view uh, there's a couple of videos on YouTube and it really is amazing how random dots can come up with uh, this particular pattern uh, I'm not going to try and say it I'll pull it up on the uh, screen there but uh, yeah from that point of view it's really interesting as I say fractal antennas do 
have their fan base and this kind of a thing around them there there may be the holy grail for miniaturization of antennas i mean that's um still to be proven but i've played around with these uh probably 20 years ago now and to be fair i didn't have the equipment to test them at the time i was just uh hoping for the best but uh let's say in, this is a popular um pattern is the the bow tie pattern with um you know the uh, fractals inside like this if you can imagine two of these laid side by side but uh if you etch this out as a fractal pattern on both sides and if you build one where it's just solid copper you tend to find that the solid copper performs better to be quite honest with you but um you know each to their own i'm not a fan but i do know they have their fan base and as far as this one is concerned if you want to pick this up if you want to do some playing around and testing with it it just works really well between three and four gigahertz um the other frequencies are nothing to write home about you can get better antennas than this if you want to, an ultra wideband antenna so just a quick video uh, quickly uh, looking at this over on the test bench to see what it performs like and uh, i will note as well that with this one the ground plane is quite big when i was building these i never used such a big ground plane as this so you know i mean that's something else you can play around with if you want to get into uh, fractal antennas, antennas uh, whether you know the ground plane plays uh, a major part of the uh, fractal antenna because you can build them without ground planes as well and as we've seen with the uh, dipole antenna having a large ground plane um, the ground plane plays a much higher part in the overall frequency of the antenna um, and that's true for a lot of antennas but uh, yeah it's uh, it's interesting it looks pretty but um i just don't really see the point in the amount of effort it takes to come up with that pattern rather than just a normal triangle but yeah you let me know you might have a difference of opinion if you did enjoy the video please uh, give it a thumbs up comments or questions drop them below um i'll do my best to answer them but i don't know a great deal about fractal antennas to be honest with you but uh, yeah hopefully you'll join me on the next one